Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Boeing's X-37B program wins the Collier Trophy. Volancey signs an agreement with the North Carolina DOT. And UAS drone research flights are being conducted at Moffett Field. Welcome to Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned. In partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. I'm Sophie Herlock. The X-37B autonomous space plane has won the prestigious Robert J. Collier Trophy for advancing technology that pushes the boundaries of flight and space exploration. Designed and built by Boeing, operated in partnership with the U.S. Space Force and managed by the U.S. Air Force Rapid Capabilities Office, the X-37B is designed to carry experiments into orbit and bring them back down to Earth for evaluation. The space plane has flown a total of six missions since 2010 and recently set a new 780-day on-orbit endurance record, completing an overflight of the United States before making a landing at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. The X-37B prevailed over a diverse group of nine finalists, which included the latest iteration of the Airborne Collision Avoidance System team, the updated Hubble Space Telescope, and Project Heaviside, a high-performance electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicle, which aims to eventually free people from traffic. The Collier Trophy has been awarded annually since 1911, and is one of the most prominent accolades in aviation. Previous winners include Orville Wright, Howard Hughes, as well as the Apollo 11 lunar landing team. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Welcome back, let's take a quick look at news making rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. It's time for today's Unmanned Minute. For the first time, Cranfield Airport used remotely piloted UAVs to inspect their runway. Due to visual line of sight restrictions, the drones currently take about 30 minutes to inspect half of the runway and fly at about 100 feet off the ground. The flights use drone in a box technology, with the goal of enabling routine inspections to take place with UAVs that can be autonomously deployed, recovered, and recharged without the need for an on site pilot. UAVionics has released Ping RX Pro, a new detect and avoid ADSB receiver for professional UAVs. Ping RX Pro detects private and commercial aircraft operating on 978 and 1090 MHz. The received aircraft's identity, position, and altitude are then visualized on a moving map in real time, allowing the UAS operator or autopilot to remain clear. Precision Hawk has been awarded two patents for technologies they've developed for unmanned aircraft traffic management, called the Automated Unmanned Air Traffic Control System. The patent and technologies are designed to enable collision avoidance between drones and manned aircraft by transmitting real-time flight data from drones to a UTM server prior to and while in flight. On this achievement, Precision Hawk stated, we see our patents as the core framework for air traffic control for drones. Drones already transmit data to their pilots, but it stops there today. It's really important to have a strong situational picture of what's going on in a localized area. Last week, the town of Buena Vista, Colorado trustees unanimously approved the Central Colorado UAS Club's concept of a drone flying park to be located on town property. The park will be located in the southeast quadrant of the town, near the intersection of Greg and Rodeo Drive, and will consist of four zones where pilots can learn or hone their flying skills. Development of the park will begin immediately, with the basic flying zone scheduled to be completed this fall, and the remaining zones scheduled for completion in the summer of 2021. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. 
Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. Valancey has signed a teaming agreement with the North Carolina Department of Transportation to begin commercial middle mile drone delivery projects in the state. The two will work together with the FAA to gather data on drone delivery programs and how they could be incorporated into the current transportation and infrastructure regulations. Initially, Valancey plans to perform tests in visual line of sight cargo delivery flights with their Voli C-10 Gen 2 UAV under Part 107 with the intent to add more projects with additional waivers and permissions from the NCDOT and the FAA. The Voli C-10 flies autonomously and can carry up to 10 pounds of cargo for over 50 miles. The drone can fully land at the delivery point, allowing Valancey to complete complex two-way missions with little to no infrastructure needed. In June and earlier this month, Researchers at NASA's Ames Research Center in California conducted drone flight tests at Moffett Field to investigate the feasibility of time-based conformance monitoring. Conformance monitoring is an important task which will be implemented in the future of air traffic controllers or UAS traffic management services, where they monitor if aircraft adhere to their assigned flight trajectories. TBCM extends this concept by continuously evaluating the times required for aircraft to maintain those trajectories for the tests at Moffett Field. Five specifically designed flight profiles were successfully flown over 26 flights to gather data for the TBCM concept evaluation. This type of research is applicable to the growth of UAS aircraft into areas such as package delivery and potentially even air taxis, mixing manned and unmanned air traffic without conflict. And that wraps up our Airborne Unmanned. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to like, subscribe, and to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. If you'd like more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned, then head over to auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. Have a great rest of your day and come back Friday to wrap up the week with an episode of Airborne Unlimited.